Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with my top 10 tips on fussy cutting for beginners. Now I say beginners because I think a lot of the more experienced crafters out there will already know some of these, but feel free to grab a cup of tea, cup of coffee, a couple of chocolate biscuits, make it three, you need them. Um, sit down, have a watch, I may be reminding you of something, or you may discover something new. So let's do the old countdown here, shall we? So, tip number 10. Um, I always find that there are always those fussy cuts that you get that you actually end up with at the bottom of your basket and you don't get to. Okay, so what I do now is once a year, I will purge my fussy cuts. So I will choose choose a memorable day. Maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's Mother's Day. Maybe it's Father's Day. Maybe it's Bank Holiday Weekend. I just choose a day only so that it reminds me to do it. And I will pull my basket of fussy cutting out and I will go through it and I will work my way through it all. Um, my fussy cuts, not the fussy cutting, my fussy cuts. I will go through my whole drawer of fussy cuts and things that are not being used or things that just don't spark my interest. Either I put them in an envelope and the next time I do happy mail, they go out with happy mail. Or to be honest, they go in the trash because they're just taking up space and you usually find the ones at the bottom of the basket are the ones you're not inspired to use. So why give them space? Okay, let's look at number 10. Um, I've got a whole pile over here, by the way, of every single one of them. So we're on to number, um, on to number nine, not number 10. Okay. This one has been long been known by many, many crafters, and that is when you're using a scissors to fussy cut, move the paper, not the scissors. And what I mean is, if I'm trying to cut around this and I'm moving my scissors, it's going to put my body in some real, really weird angles. One shot I am now. If, however, you keep your scissors relatively stationary and actually move your other hand, you're far likely to get better cuts. Also, something I would suggest too is don't do a habit which a lot of us do, which is we keep the stuff on here and keep going. If it's in the way, cut it off. But again, it's a case of keep the scissors relatively steady. And then what I do is I tend to move my paper. I get easier, smoother cuts that way as I go along. Now, it's okay when I'm doing a digital here. I mean, I'm using this digital because I need to fussy cut these digitals because I'm about to do a collaboration video for Rachel Bell Crafts, which is what this, this digital is from. So remember, hold the scissors, move the paper, especially when it comes to stuff like this. Now, when it comes to stuff like this, so say we want to cut that out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get in there and I'm going to release it from its background. Don't be struggling with your background. Get, get the piece of kit out of there. This goes back in the fussy cut drawer. But there's lots of nooks and crannies here. So I'm cutting with my scissors and then I'm turning my paper around. Now this is an acceptable use. You will find so many crafters, collages, artists. This is how they do it. They, they just get in there and they will move, move the paper and not the scissors. Again, I've come to that call. Let's get rid of that bit and then start again. So there you go. Those are two things that I suggest you to. Scissors relatively straight, move the paper. That, that's a big one. That changed a lot of how I actually fussy cut when I first learned that trick. We're up to number eight. Right, I've got all these clipped together. So I, I've gone through this. I've seen what we're doing. So we're up to number eight. So number eight. Um, a lot of the time when you get a digital... Sometimes you'll get this with other things as well, but with the digital, what you'll find is the artist, and this again is from Rachel and Bella, has very nicely put extra pieces. Like if you look here, this has got a whole heck of a lot of detail in the background. Now, the way this is supposed to be cut is you're supposed to cut the frames out and then cut the middle out. Well, I'm not going to waste all of this printed real estate. Firstly, it's my ink. Secondly, that might become a really nice piece for collage. This was a strip down the side of one of the pages. That, if I would stamped words on that, that becomes labels. So always look at digitals. Um, if you're kind enough to have a digital artist who's actually put stuff in the background for you, utilise it. It makes great sense to do so. Okay, on to number seven. Now, 
number seven. Um, I selectively fussy cut. Okay, when I cut butterflies out, I don't cut the antennae out. Purely because if they're really thin, what's going to happen when this is stored? They're going to get broken. So where's that scissors gone again? So I will, I'm not going to cut the whole fussy cut butterfly out for you. Let's get back in shot again, Griffiths. So I will come around. I will snip down and I will just take out the majority of the piece around my butterfly's antennae. Or Gail Augustinelli, those would be antlers to you. So this is how I store it. However, just before I stick it into anything, I will then come in and I will do my extra little bit of fussy cutting and take, take the antennae and clean them up and I would spend a little more time and I'd take those little edges off there. A lot of the time when it comes to using butterflies what I really do or I do if I'm doing in a collage is I take the antennae off completely and I get a fine black line marker that's a permanent ink and once it's stuck on my collage I just draw them back in. Now this is also something that's really proud prevalent when you're looking at things like fussy cutting flowers from a book. So if I had this slot here let's just roughly release it from its background. Now obviously fussy cutting takes a little more time than I'm showing you here. Just put that over there, take that away. Now these pieces here, when I'm going to use this to glue it down, I would probably go in there and take a few of those sections out. However, to save them being damaged, what I'm really going to do is I'm just going to fussy cut this part of it and not all of the delicate little pieces. So I won't do the whole thing because I don't want this video to be hours long, but I just want you to see how much detail I do cut and how much I leave behind when this is going to go into storage. And by storage, I mean, is it going to go into my ephemera folder? Is it going to go into my fussy cut boxes? Where's it going to go? So this is how I would store it. Then when it came time to actually use it, I would then come in and where these extra pieces of white are, I would then come in and fussy cut them at this point before I glued them down. So let's just bring my little scissors in there. It's not easy seeing this through the screen of a camera. So see, I would get the finer details in because if it's stored with those there, obviously it's going to get damaged. So that was tip number seven. On to tip number six. Okay, this one may be, this tip number six, this may be really obvious to everybody. However, it's worth saying, because as I've said, we may have newbies watching and this is who I'm aiming this for. Don't overlook your craft punches. Okay? Now, I say this purely because sometimes if you're using a kit that has a pocket that has a notch in it, the artist will have created the notch there but as long as your punch goes over the edges, you can punch the notch with a punch and get the thumb notch out far easier than cutting with the scissors. Now, this is actually a pocket. Now, as you can see, I could cut those with scissors, but I don't need to. If I come in here, can you see that? Pop. Pop. Now, these pieces are meant to be folded back. And then once they're folded back, they're on the inside. So when you've done the pocket, so I'll do this quickly here in front of you. So I'm a little low on the screen, I know. So I'm just doing this quickly. Please spend a little more time. But as you can see, when the pocket's done, it's never going to notice that you cut those with a circle bunch anyway. But it's far quicker and far easier. Now, while we're talking about punches, punches are a really useful thing to use, especially when you're using digitals. So, this is um, a digital from Rachel Bellacraft. As I said, I've all, I'm working on a collab with them at the moment. So, you own the digital, you can print it many times as you can. Just because the designer has made these, as I would call them, journal cards, that doesn't mean they need to stay like that. Okay, if you happen to have a stamp punch, what's this one? Creative Emotions, it's a stamp punch. 
as in postage stamp. I can come in here with my postage stamp, maybe go by there, pop the little sucker out. Now I've got something that's postage stamped as a piece of ephemera using the same principle. I mean, this is a square one by, what's that say? Vaseen Creative, don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry if you're, the, you're these people, I, I'm bad with names. So I can come in and take a section of this out. Oh, out you come. And once again, I've got a nice little topper that could put a label on it or something. So don't look look those gifts in, in the mouth and go, I can't use them. So right, I've got that butterfly down. Just going to snip this out of here and see if I can do one more thing. So I've got a small circle punch. Let's see if I can get it so that it's around that butterfly. And this is something you can do. You can take a digital and in the fussy cutting process, make it something new. So there you go. There's a little button for um, an element for your piece. So there's the square, put the butterfly on it, and you've got another piece of layering. So don't overlook your um, punches. Also, if you do have a digital or something that is actually circular, don't stress, or oh, I don't have... Um, a circle punch exactly the same size, it doesn't matter. I mean, no one's going to come and cross-check with you on whether you use the right size punch for it. If the punch is marginally smaller, that's fine. If it's marginally bigger, that's also fine because you can just distress ink the edges of the circle, which will take that white piece away anyway. So just don't, don't forget about your punches. I love using my punches on digitals and on fussy cutting because they really do speed things up. Right. Okay, for another example here. Okay, I've got this here. Where's that square one gone again? Um, it's probably gonna be a little bit close to the edge, so let's just... So this is just a book page. I always use my punch so that I can see what's in my punch. So there you go, without fussy cutting at all, I've got this little piece, if I put a little bit of a label there, that then becomes a topper on something. So just look at look at what you've got and utilise the tools to speed yourself up because fussy cutting can take a long time. Okay, where are we up to? We're on to number five. Number five. Now, um, I'm going to use this as an example um, for no other reason than I just wanted to give you something to look at. It's another tag by Richard Bella Craft. Um, when you're printing a digital, and I'm using the word digital here because this is where a lot of the fussy cutting comes into it. Print your digitals onto the appropriate paper or card stock if your printer will do it. So I printed this onto pretty much copier paper. Now I know I'm going to have to back this with something. However, if my printer will allow me to print on cardstock, I could have printed that on cardstock and it's already done. I wouldn't have had to do it. Now, likewise, if I'm doing collage work and I'm using collage pieces um, from a digital, I would print them on copier paper or maybe a thin presentation paper so that they're not going to bulk up my journal or my ephemera. Um, a lot of that stuff is just just think about what you're printing on. Don't just hit the print button on your printer. Decide what you want to print on. It's like in the kit I'm working with at the moment, there are some black and white photographs. So when it came time to print those, I printed those on um, a satin finished photo paper because it then gives me more realism to the photograph instead of me printing it onto just a flimsy paper. So that was number five. So number four. There you go, number four. I've had loads of comments about these cards. Thank you very much. I know you all love them. Okay. Um, when you've cut a designer's digital kit and you're storing it, depending on if you've got a YouTube channel and depends on whether you support or promote Etsy or other designers, I always, like I keep a lot of my fussy cuts in these boxes. And what I do is on the front, because you can see that says T Fox labels. To me, that's Tracy Fox labels. It's a digital of hers. I like to give a nod out to anyone whose digitals I'm using, purely because that means that 
I'm supporting them in a way that I can. And hopefully someone out there may have never heard of Tracy Fox. And it's the first time they've seen that digital. And it helps support our artistic community. So if you're someone who actually does use digitals and you do use them in your YouTubes, it's nice to just know because you'll always get questions in the comments. Where's that digital from or where's that image from? It's far easier if you've labelled a box. If you're someone who has ephemera folders, just put a little piece of paper with the name of the designer in it. Or as I've seen Gail Agostinelli does, she has little lunch bags and she keeps um, a note of the designer in with them as well. Yeah, no, it takes a little bit extra effort, but you know what? I like to help other people and if I can promote, I will promote. On to number three. Number three tip. Now, this one is really obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. Use the appropriate size scissors for the cut. Okay, now I happen to use Tim Holtz's scissors by Tonic. I like them. They've got a slightly serrated edge to them, which I personally like. Some crafters do not. For years, I couldn't really afford this type of scissors. And I was using this type of scissors and a little pair of nail scissors. They worked equally as well. I don't have to have expensive equipment to do this job. I just like, I like these scissors. I've got big hands. I like the flexibility of the handles on these purely because I find with my hands, I've got big thumbs and I can get them in here where with some scissors, like on this one, for instance, after you cut for a while, my thumb tends to go numb because the hole is too small for me. Also, another thing to think about, too, is, oh, there's Biscuit barking in the background. Thank you for that, Biscuit. Is um, always make sure that if you've got lots of straight lines, use a guillotine, use a trimmer. I mean, if, you, if you've got something that's got straight lines in it, by all means, just take your, your trimmer. Usually the artist who's created it has pretty much lined things up. If I just come in, oh, it was misjudged that, didn't I? I can come in and cut all the straight edges, cut them on mass, and then I've just got to snip the corners and it's done. So that's another thing. Make sure you use whatever equipment you've got. The hardest thing for me is actually cutting a straight line, um, purely because I wear uh, very focals. And I find, say, say I'm doing this, say I was cutting along that line. As I get further along the line, I tend to swing off to the right. However, if I use a long pair of scissors, that long pair of scissors means the blade doesn't have a bend in it, it's going to cut it straight. Also, I wouldn't go in and say I was fussy cutting this, this. I wouldn't go in with this size scissors trying to fussy cut my way around this. It's doable, but it's a bit unwieldy. Um, it's far easier to actually just come in and use a small pair of scissors to do it. Now, as we're talking about fussy cutting, there is another thing I want to point out here. Let's see if I've got something I can show you with. Yeah, let's show you with. OK, let's go back to this lily here. Now, when you're fussy cutting, you should make a decision as to how you want to fussy cut. So I just need to do a little bit of prep work here. I hadn't thought about sharing this one with you. OK. You can fussy cut and leave a small border around, or you can fussy cut and leave no border around. That's, you can probably see even clearer there. So there's a small white border and there's no border. Now, the joy of using a small white border means if you've got some really fine detail, you can skirt around it without destroying it. Um, the disadvantage of leaving a white border is I usually think that anything with a small white border on looks like a sticker. Anything that's got cut right up to the edge looks not like a sticker. However, if this is the version you want to do, there's no reason why you can't come in and just do that. And then that will blend away that. It'll give it some ease for you. So just know that leave a white border, don't leave a white border. It's a personal choice. I like to cut as close as I can, but there are definitely times when it's a case of there's going to be a white border. And if it looks like a sticker, I'm OK with that. So where are we up to? That was number three. Where's number two gone? There's number two. Okay, this is a page of fussy cutting. Now, if this is in my fussy cutting basket, like this, 
I'm going to look at this and go, oh, that's a heck of a lot of work. And if I'm not in the mood to fussy cut, I won't start fussy cutting this. However, what I would say is when you're printing your digitals out, or you're taking book pages out of a book, or you're taking magazine pages out of a magazine, especially if you're printing, this works really well, your printer's going to take time to do stuff. So what do I do? The first thing I do is I make them into bite-sized pieces. Now, you've got your scissors, or you've got a guillotine. Now, these happen to be straight, so I'll pull in my favourite bit of kit, which is this one, and I will come in, and as my printer is printing away, I will come in and I will just... I've cut along the edge because I've got to cut it anyway. And I will come in again and I will... So now when I put these two in my basket, they're far less likely to be ignored. This one I can't do anymore. I could take off the butterflies from the side and this will lead me up to my top tip. So as you can see, I can break them down. And this is what I do is I, I find um, an A4 or a letter size page of fussy cutting just puts me off. But if I've got small pieces like this, then that's much more manageable. So I will I will cut my digitals or cut my book pages, trim them so that they don't look so big, which leads me quite nicely to number one. There's my tray of fussy cuts. Now I haven't cut fussy cut anything, number one, haven't fussy cut anything for a few days. But as you can see in here, they're all bite-sized pieces, like this was a whole page, so I've cut it down to smaller pieces. There are some times that there are pages that are big like this. Now, I was obviously a bit lazy. I could easily have just rubbed my trimmer down there, cut that into smaller pieces, but it's all square. I know I'm, I'm gonna cut that with a guillotine or a trimmer. That's not gonna take me long to cut. So, but this stuff, I, I usually break down. Now, my top tip, number one tip is, Cut something every day. The first thing I do every morning when I come into the craft cave is I usually grab one of these and I'll cut it out. Now normally I use that as thinking time because cutting out is not, not really mental geometry for me. Um, I will be cutting out thinking about, okay, what am I going to do for the day? Usually I'll probably get one or two of these done and that's it. If I've got a busy schedule, maybe I'll just cut this one out maybe I'll just pull out one thing and cut around this. And then what happens is this basket is constantly being pared down. Granted, there's more stuff going in it, probably on a daily basis as well, but it's being pared down. So it's not this onerous amount of work that needs to be done. So periodically just pick up something. Okay, I would pick that up and I would probably fussy cut that around there. And that's my one piece of cutting in the morning. And then maybe during the day I'll go, oh, I'm waiting for some ink to dry or paint to dry. I would pick up another piece. So I always have this on a shelf, usually close by my scissors. And I know that, right, at any point, I'm just fussy cut. If you put fussy cutting off, this basket will become full and then it'll become a task you don't want to do. OK, so hopefully that helped. So those were my top 10. Um, let's play card dealer, shall we? Um, so hopefully there was at least one top tip in there that you actually hadn't heard before. Hopefully it found it useful. Um, if anything, there's a bonus tip I should actually have mentioned, to be honest with you. Okay, if you're going to fussy cut something that you would eventually be backing. Okay, let's let's pull, pull out one of these digitals. Okay, these in my opinion, most of these will probably become journal cards. Now, if you can't print um, card stock on your printer, then the first thing I would do is once I've got this page sorted out, I would e immediately glue it to a piece of light card or a bit of coffee paper. And then when I'm cutting out, I'm cutting out both the front and the back at the same time. Instead of cutting the ephemera piece out, then gluing it onto a piece of cardstock and then cutting the cardstock out. Time is a precious commodity. So yes, you'd have small pieces that have maybe got backing on them. I would probably save that piece there because you know what? I could stamp on something onto that and then that could become another piece of ephemera. So there you go. 10 top tips from Kerry and a bonus tip. And I think that's all from me for today. So you take care, guys. Hopefully this helped. 
just wanted to share this with some of the beginners out there. Maybe it'll help you along on your journey. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.